Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's talk about Wien's Law. Wien was a famous physicist who did a lot of study in radiation and the temperature of objects that radiate out energy, and he found a relationship between the kind of radiation coming from an object and its temperature. We now already know, if you will find out if you look at some of the previous videos that we've done, that the way objects radiate is due to the chemical, or not chemical, but the kinetic energy that the atoms have within them in terms of the atoms in there vibrating. So an object that has atoms, atoms vibrate, there's atoms that have electric fields around them, and when those electric fields vibrate back and forth with the atoms, they cause electromagnetic radiation to emit. The hotter an object, the faster the atoms vibrate, the higher the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation, the more energy it carries, and the cooler the object is, the slower the atoms vibrate, the lower the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. So, we now realize that the kind of radiation coming from an object really depends on the temperature, and Wien was able to formulate that into an equation. He realized that the temperature is equal to some constant divided by the wavelength that occurs the most. In other words, the wavelength at which more atoms vibrate or more electromagnetic radiation uh, is emanated from the object than any other type of wavelength. So that would be what we call the peak wavelength of the radiation curve, and we'll look at that in just a moment. The constant here had to be experimentally derived. Now, we'll show you an example of how that works in just a moment, but let's take a look at what we call the radiation curve. Since all atoms in an object all don't vibrate at the same frequency, some vibrate a little bit faster, some vibrate a little bit slower, even though the whole object is pretty well at the same temperature, there's variation in how fast atoms vibrate in stars, in any object. So therefore, some give off higher frequency radiation, some give off lower frequency radiation, and so this is what we call this distribution curve of the radiation. You can see, though, that at some point it peaks, and we call that the peak wavelength of the radiation curve. There's more atoms that vibrate at that particular frequency, giving off radiation at that particular wavelength, than at any other frequency or any other wavelength. So we call that the peak wavelength. And so if we use that value in here, we can find the temperature of the object. Notice also that cooler objects don't radiate with as much intensity. They have a lower intensity, and the radiation curve is push to the right somewhat, so we have longer wavelength radiation as being the peak of the curve, and also longer, longer wavelengths means lower frequency, lower energy as well. Now, let's try to use Wien's equation, for example, with the sun. We know what the temperature of the sun is, at least on its surface, because we can measure the wavelength of the radiation coming from the sun. Now, with the sun, it predominantly gives off yellow light more than any other color, and so that's why the sun looks yellow. And the wavelength of yellow light is about 500 nanometers. So let's plug that into the equation and see what we get. So the temperature of the surface of the sun is equal to 0 0.0029 divided by the wavelength that occurs the most, which would be the peak wavelength, so we call that for yellow light, 500 nanometers, which is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, and that would be Kelvin times meters would, of course, be the units for the constant. So maybe I'll put Kelvin times meters up here. And so then the meters cancel out. We end up with Kelvin. And if we then calculate that, then I've already done that before, I know the answer then would be T is equal to 5,800 Kelvin, which is indeed the surface temperature of the sun. And so we can actually measure any object, at least the temperature of any object, by simply measuring the radiation coming from that object. For example, when you, nowadays when you walk in a doctor's office and they want to measure your temperature, they may give you this little apparatus, they don't actually give it to you, someone will use it, they'll stick it in your ear and they'll measure the radiation coming from the ear canal, which is basically a good representation of the radiation coming from inside your body, which is therefore a good representation of the body temperature. The machine then has a little computer in it, it calculates this very quickly by measuring the radiation and it tells you what your body temperature is. So we use that now in modern devices in medicine and in, of course, a lot of other applications. So it's now very easy to measure the temperature of object by simply measuring the radiation coming from it. Measure the wavelength, divide it into 0 0.2, 0 0.0029, and that pops the temperature. Pretty handy. But in astronomy, this is extremely useful because now all we have to do is measure the radiation from any object, a planet, a star, you name it, and from that we can figure out what the temperature of that, of that object is. It's really, really handy in astronomy and very simple to do with Wien's Law.